Hello, this is Bible Academy for Children. I'm Pastor Teacher Curtis Somo, and we continue in the book of Daniel. But before we get started, let's make sure that we have confessed our sins, they are con that we are controlled by the Spirit of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the opportunity you've given us to study your word. We ask that we'll have open hearts and minds to your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we are in the thick of the book of Daniel. And when you get into the thick of it, you have to go slow. And sometimes you only get to look at a few verses at a time. But we're here to learn God's word. So that doesn't make any difference to us. Now, we are in Daniel chapter 7. We were looking at the celestial courtroom. And then what happened afterwards. Let's go back and get a glance at the courtroom again in verses 9 and 10. While I was looking until thrones were set in place and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow and his head as pure wool. And his throne was ablaze with fire, its wheels a burning fire. A river of fire was flowing and coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands of angels were tending him and myriads upon myriads of angels were standing before him. The court sat, and the books were opened. In verse 11, we see the next scene. Then I kept looking because of the sound of the great words which the horn was speaking. I was looking still, until the beast was killed, and its body was destroyed and given to the flaming fire. Well, remember last time we saw that this beast is actually the fourth beast, but along with the fourth beast was the horn, that little horn, who we identified as the Antichrist. So we have been looking at the four beasts, which is the four major Gentile, Gentile powers. Four major Gentile powers that will rule over the area of Israel. And this goes on for hundreds of years. Let's look at our chart that reminds us of not only what those empires were, but how they are vi viewed in two visions. The vision of the statue and the vision we're looking at now, the four beasts. Let's go down the far right side of the column. Babylon, Media Persia, Greece, Rome, and then Rome too, that is led by the Antichrist. Now we come to verse 12. But before we look at it, let me remind you that we just looked at the last beast. Now the last two beasts, Rome 1, Rome I should say, and Rome 2, actually are viewed as going down together. <clears throat> that's the way they're viewed in the beast. However, in history, the first Rome is already gone. The second Rome is yet to come. Now, Daniel, in verse 12, is going to speak about the rest of the beast. The rest of the beast are the first three. It's a little confusing because it's out of order, but 
but I'll explain it as we look at it. Verse 12. As for the rest of the beast, their dominion was taken away, but an extension of life was granted to them for an appointed period of time, which means a season of time. So what Daniel is doing, remember this is one vision where he sees these four beasts, right? He sees one, two, three, and four, and four has two parts, right? Part one, part two, Rome one, Rome two. Let's, let's put it back in Roman numerals since we're doing Rome stuff, okay? The rest of the beast here are Babylon, Persia, Greece. These are the rest of the beast. Their dominion was taken away. Dominion means their authority to rule. So that's gone. Also it says, but they got to live longer. In other words, they got to live for a long time. All of these beasts live for a few hundred years. However, even Rome 1 lived a few hundred years, didn't it? But Rome 2 didn't last but about, oh, seven years. And it was quickly destroyed by the Lord himself. So what Daniel's doing in verse 12 is telling us that <clears throat> these beasts got to live a while in his vision. Remember, this is still partly future. He's given this vision during the time of Babylon. But he sees in this vision, these get to live a while. But then they will be turned over to the next kingdom, right? Persia takes over Babylon. Greece takes over Persia. Rome takes over Greece. This one lasts a while, but then it suddenly ends. It's thrown with the beast, the Antichrist, into the fire. So that's what he's telling us in verse 12. <clears throat> verse 13 he goes back into poetry now if he goes back into poetry where do you think the scene takes place it takes place as if it's in heaven I kept looking in the night visions and behold with the clouds of heaven that sky, the sky one like a son of man was coming and he came up to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. Well, let's look at this a line at a time. Here he is looking again in his vision. It's a vision at night. And behold, the clouds of heaven, that's the sky, the clouds in the sky, one like a son of man was coming. Let's talk about this one phrase, Son of Man. So in his vision, Daniel's looking, and in the heavens he sees one like a Son of Man. Now what does that mean? That refers to Jesus Christ. But why is he called a son of man? Because Jesus is also man. And remember, he's looking into the future. Jesus Christ became a man when he was born of the Virgin Mary. He was already God. So now, 
He is man and God. Fully man and fully God. Now this is hard to understand. But God became man. And one of the titles for him being man is son of man. So what Daniel is seeing, he's not seeing an angel. He's not seeing the Ancient of Days. He's seeing someone that looks like a man. And Son of Man becomes an important title for Jesus. In fact, Jesus uses it many, many times referring to himself. And what he's doing is he is referring to himself as human. And we call that humanity. Humanity. It tells us that the one that is going to come in the clouds of the sky is man. And he's God. He's from heaven. And he's also man. And that's none other than Jesus Christ. So Daniel has a vision of Christ coming. He's looking into the future to the time when the Son of Man comes down. And he comes to, let me put the last two lines in, and he came up to the Ancient of Days. Now where do we see the Ancient of Days last? He was on his judgment throne, wasn't he? And he, this was Jesus Christ, is presented before the Ancient of Days. So it's like the throne is here with the Ancient of Days on it. Okay, who we know is God the Father. Ancient of Days. The Son comes up. He's presented by the angels. He's escorted by angels, okay? Angels escort Jesus up to the Father. He's presented to them. I mean, to the Father. The angels present Jesus Christ to the Father. It's like having an escort. Now let's stop a moment and look at this phrase, Son of Man. The reason why is because it is a very important title for Jesus. But let me just point out three places Jesus uses it in the New Testament. Now remember I said <clears throat> that Jesus liked to use this title for himself. Matthew 8.20 Jesus replied, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. You see, Jesus didn't have a permanent home on earth. He slept where sometimes he would be a guest in someone's home. Sometimes he might have slept out in the field with his disciples. But what we want to see here, that when he talks about himself, he calls himself the Son of Man. Another example is regarding the very thing we're looking at now in Daniel, his coming. For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. So here Jesus refers to himself as the Son of Man when he comes to reward believers. 
Another time is when Jesus will be on his throne in his future kingdom. Matthew 19, 28. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now, when Jesus said this, he was talking to his disciples. All right? So he's referring to 12 disciples judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Of course, we know that Judas betrayed Christ, but he was replaced so that there will be 12 disciples ruling with Christ in his kingdom. So, the Son of Man title is an important title. Let's go back to Daniel. One more time, Daniel 7, 13. I kept looking at in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like a son of man was coming. And he came up to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. So here the Son of Man is coming before God the Father and he's going to receive his kingdom. Verse 14. That gives us, verse 14, gives us a picture of Jesus receiving his kingdom. To him, that's the Son of Man, was given dominion, honor, and sovereignty. All peoples, nations, and language groups were revering him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which will not pass away, and his kingdom will not be destroyed. Let's talk about some of these words. The first line, to him was given dominion. That means authority to rule. He received the official authority to rule. He was given honor. This is the glory that comes with that authority to rule. You know, if you did something really great, somebody might give you a medal. Well, that comes with honor. You get some glory for a while. And then sovereignty. Now, we've studied sovereignty. We've studied the sovereignty of God. We've studied the sovereignty of kings. We ought to know what that means by now. But that means rule. The rule as king, the rule over a kingdom. And then we see the list of who the Son of Man will rule over. All peoples, all nations, and language groups were revering him. That means to worship or serve. So the entire world will revere Jesus Christ when he comes to receive his kingdom. Christ is given worldwide rule. So here's what happens. Let me give you a timeline. All right. Here's the cross. This is the time in which we live. Here comes the final seven years. Okay? Christ comes back. When he comes back, he receives authority, dominion, to rule over planet Earth. We call this the kingdom of God on earth. 
Christ will set up his kingdom. He will set up his kingdom in Jerusalem, in the temple, in Israel, Israel, and he will rule the entire world. He is King of Kings, he is Lord of Lords, and he will have all dominion and authority and honor and sovereignty and rule over all people and nations and everyone who speaks a language. He will do this for 1,000 years. Now, the name for that 1,000 years, we call it the millennium. Okay, the millennium. All the people of the world will come under the authority of Jesus Christ as king on earth. And they are expected to fear and revere and worship him. So what we have here, let's look at our chart, Rome 2 ends with the beast tossed into the lake of fire. Jesus Christ comes down and sets up his kingdom on earth that he will rule. This is separate. This thousand years is actually over here. Okay, on our time on our timeline. So here Christ will rule a thousand years. One more time. Let's look at this again. This is the seven year period. Rome 2. This is in the future. Christ will return, set up his kingdom on earth and rule for 1,000 years. It's a long time, isn't it? Now, after Daniel had this vision, he really didn't know what it meant. Now, we've looked at the vision and we've interpreted a lot of it as we looked at the vision but Daniel doesn't know yet which is unusual because usually if you remember he's the one who has interpreted the vision of someone else but this time he's going to have to have some help because God doesn't give it to him directly He's going to use an angel. Well, in verse 15, after Daniel sees this vision of the four beasts, of the heavenly courtroom, of the Son of Man coming, how does he feel about it? Verse 15, as for me, Daniel, my spirit was distressed within me. And the visions in my head were alarming me. Daniel describes his own condition as he's pretty shook up. Uh, he's distressed about it. It even says they were alarming him. That means they upset him. He didn't know what to make of it. Now, remember, he's still a captive. Though he's had high offices, his people are still in Babylon at this time. And he wants his people to go back to Jerusalem. But what he sees here is a future of Gentile nations still ruling over Israel. 
And in the distant future, and he's not clear on this, that's why he's going to ask questions, he sees the Son of Man coming. So a lot has got to happen before that kingdom of God is set upon the earth. And I think that's what's distressing him. We're going to have to wait that long. Now, we're, we're not told that he knew how long that would be. But he's got to th see these nations, even though he won't be there, these nations are still going to have to come into existence, and they're going to have to become empires, and then we're going to go to Rome 1, and then he doesn't understand yet about Rome 2, He's distressed about it. He's alarmed about it. Verse 16. What's he do? I approached one of those standing nearby and asked him about the exact meaning of all of this. So he spoke to me and made known to me the interpretation of the vision. Now, this is rather strange because what happens is Daniel's having a vision and he's within his own vision. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's seeing a vision and he's within his own vision. So maybe I can portray it this way. Daniel's seeing this vision, all right? And now he's in his own vision. And he approaches one of those, remember the throne room? With all those angels around? Remember? He approaches one of those guys. One of those angels. Because he wants to know the meaning of it. So, in verse 16, he tells us that the angel is going to interpret the vision for him. That's the last line. Daniel says, So he, that's the angel, spoke to me and made known to me the interpretation of the vision. And then in the next two verses, the angel is going to start to interpret. So what we start to get in verses 17 and 18 is the angelic interpretation. Now, what the angel does, he basically takes all the verses that we've just seen, all right, up through 15, roughly 1 through 15, and he's going to put them down into two verses and explaining a couple of things about them. In verse 17, look at what he says. These great beasts, which are four in number, or four kings who will arise from the earth. Well, that helps a lot. Daniel didn't understand that. But now he's probably thinking, well, that's what I learned from Nebuchadnezzar's vision years ago. And that helps us understand also. Now, we saw in the vision that came out of the sea. Well, the sea is part of the earth. So that's just a technicality. But the four kings come out of the earth, which means those four empires are going to come up. We've already learned that the four winds of heaven made that happen. So God is involved. And then he says, But the holy ones of the Most High will receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever. Now, has he seen this before? 
Has he seen the holy ones of the Most High possessing the kingdom forever and ever? No, but he has seen that the kingdom would be forever. But now he sees the holy ones of the Most High. Now, does he know who these holy ones are? Are they angels? We know they're holy. The elect angels are. The good angels are. But now he's going to start to... The angel's going to start to explain some things that Daniel didn't understand. So, he first tells him these great beasts are four in number. Their four kings will come out of the earth. But then the kingdom... They will possess and receive forever. That is, the holy ones. Well, we need to learn who the holy ones are and what it means that they will possess, they will receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever. One more time, here's what the angel said. These great beasts which are four in number are four kings who will arise from the earth, but the holy ones of the Most High will receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever. And that's where we'll begin next time. Let's pray. Well, Father, we do thank you for this lesson. Uh, these things are wonderful to study. They're sometimes hard to understand. So we ask that you will help us not only understand them, but make them real in our mind. So we look forward to the time of your kingdom, the time of the Son of, the, Son of Man coming back to this earth. In Jesus' name, amen.